Hi, and welcome to the Albion Online Theory. This aims to be an educational series whose goal is to experiment with and explain game mechanics to the player base. I'll try to answer questions most people are too lazy to figure out themselves, and today we're diving into the nitty gritty of buffs and debuffs, specifically focusing on how they impact the damage dealing mechanics. Okay, I guess most people already know what buffs and debuffs are, but since it's key for this episode I'll explain it quickly. Buffs are temporary enhancing effects that you apply to yourself or teammates, and for this episode we will only focus on buffs that increases the damage output of a player and ignore buffs that modify defenses, movement speed, etc. Examples of these are Defenseless Rush from the Royal Sandals, Magic Rune on the Royal Robe, or Mortal Agony on the Stalker Hood, and many more. Debuffs, on the other hand, are temporary negative effects that you often apply to your enemies, and again, I'm only focusing on those that make your enemy take more damage from your attacks, either from reducing their defenses or their resistances. I did ignore HP cut from this tutorial, but perhaps that can be an episode on its own later on. Examples of debuffs are Corrupting Steel from the Spirit Hunter, Fearless Strike from the Carving Sword, Armor Piercer from any Curse Staff or Frazzle from any Arcane Staff, and if they have less than 50% uh, HP, the Mortal Agony from the Stalker Hood applies a debuff too, in addition to giving the user a buff. So, to demonstrate this, I can't think of a more fitting weapon than the one-handed Curse Staff. And to set the basis for these tests, we're gonna see how much 4 stacks of this Curse Staff does without any buffs or debuffs. As you can see here, with 4 stacks, each tick does 148 damage. And if you also add the E, you can see that it will blow up for 1177 damage. So, now to the real tests. How does my buffs work exactly? Well, any buff that I have active at the time where I apply a damage spell counts, and it doesn't matter if the damage of that spell is delayed, like for the death curse. So, it doesn't matter if my buffs are active when the curse blows up, as long as they were active when I cast the spell in the first place. So with all my damage buffs active, you can see my ticks are 199 and the E hits for 1580, even if my damage buffs already have expired. And now to demonstrate the opposite. Here I will use my death curse, and while we wait for the death curse to proc, I will apply all my buffs. But as you can see, the damage is the same as when we weren't buffed at all. In fact, let me show you another thing. Here I'm keeping 4 stacks up without any buffs. It deals 148 damage per tick. If I then activate the Defenseless Rush and reapply, you can see the damage goes up to 161. But if I deactivate Defenseless Rush and reapply, you can see the tick damage actually goes back down to 148 per tick, even if there was time left. Fortunately, both Q1 and Q2 on the Curse Staffs also deal a bit of direct damage, so it's still worth reapplying it. But if you use Q3, you might actually do less damage. And now over to debuffs. Debuffs work differently. For a debuff to have any effect, it has to be applied to an enemy at the time they take damage. It doesn't matter if a debuff spell was active when you cast your damage spell, if it expires before the damage is dealt, as shown here in this clip. Even if I put my armor piercer before the E, the damage is still the same as before. This is because the armor piercer debuff had already expired when the E procced. Now, let's see what happens when I use Armor Piercer so that it's still up when my E procs. That's 1470 damage. Much better. So, let's see how much damage we can do by using all our spells correctly. That means we're using all our buffs before we use our E, then we will apply our debuff before the Death Curse procs. That's a huge difference. Our ticks are now hitting for 249 damage and our E dealt a massive 1973. You can see the results there, and it's obvious that knowing how to utilize buffs and debuffs can benefit you greatly. So to summarize, the too long didn't read version of this would be something along the lines of remember to have your buffs active when you use your damaging spells, and make sure your enemies are debuffed before you actually damage them. I will keep diving into mechanics like this, so if you have any suggestions, just drop them in the comments below. Subscribe, like, click the bell and all that jazz, and I will see you in the next lesson. Class dismissed!